Welcome to Aero TV's daily update from EAA AirVenture Oshkosh for Friday, August 1st, 2008. The day began with the official dedication of the FAA's new control tower at Oshkosh's Whitman Regional Airport. There's a lot of good things that go on in the, in the, in the Great Lakes region aviation-wise, but certainly one of the crown jewels is the uh, EAA AirVenture that happens every year, this, every year this time of year. And so it's a terrific backdrop for what we're here to do today, which is de dedicate this beautiful facility we're standing in front of. Yeah. <laughs> This is a facility that will meet the aviation needs of, uh, of this area for the foreseeable future, and not just two weeks a year, but 52 weeks a year. This is the right location, it's the right facility, and it does more than just enhance safety and, and, and operational aspects. It's an icon here. It's really an example of the backbone of safety, the emphasis that we put into the system. And I think together with the state of Wisconsin, the county of Winnebago, we did put together a first-rate facility. 140 feet top to bottom, but more important, Wanda, and for the controllers, 121 feet uh, to the controller eye levels. It's going to serve the EAA well with the 21,000 flights and departures that occur here during Air Venture, but it'll serve Whitman Airport year-round for an additional 63,000 flights that come in and out of this airport. You happy to be here? I am happy to be here. I'm happy to have the new tower. I'm happy to have the talent of the controllers that are here. Um, Milwaukee, I could not be happier with, with what they've done with the new airspace. It's just all worked really wonderfully, and it's been a great week so far. The Goodyear blimp made a return visit to Oshkosh this year, and Aero TV got an inside look at what it's like to fly it. Uh, one of my favorite events is Oshkosh right here. We, uh, we have a good time. There's a lot of interest in the blimp, and we love flying here, seeing all the different aircraft as well. Uh, the Akron crew, we have five pilots on our crew, and uh, that gives us enough room to have uh, one on vacation. So we only have four here when we're in Oshkosh right now. Uh, we also have uh, uh, crew members, they all have specialties on our crew. Uh, we have people that take care of our uh, administrative work. We have people that take care of our vehicles. Uh, we have people that take care of our fabric and all the rigging that has to be done on the airship. So everybody has a specialty. They just don't help land the airship. They other have other duties to do as well. As you can see right now, we're moored to the mooring mast, and that's where the airship stays overnight and it'll swing around that pole uh, where it needs to be. It's like a giant windsock. When we're ready to go flying, what happens is the crew all gets around the airship and they kind of uh, take us off that mast and they'll move us to an area away of any obstacles. And then once we get to that area and we're cleared for takeoff, the airship will go flying. And usually what happens is the crew will bounce the airship and then I'll go flying. And that's kind of like the, the, how it goes with getting the airship launched. My favorite part about being a Goodyear blimp pilot is the people, probably, because they're always excited to go on the airship, and whether they're on the ground watching somebody fly or they're flying themselves, it brings excitement and cheer to everybody. I just love it. I could stay up there all day. Aero TV's daily update from Air Venture will continue in a moment. Sunny or cloudy. Rainy or bright, day or night, the future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT, synthetic vision technology. Welcome back to Aero TV's daily update from Air Venture. A special effort was made by EAA at this year's event to recognize and honor women in aviation. Women Venture was a place for women to congregate and share their enthusiasm for flight. What was the inspiration that drove you to work so hard to do this? Um, I don't know. I mean, we Peggy and, and Pat Lukey and I sat down after last year's convention and we said, it seems like everything at the convention really is geared towards men and, 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 and pilots who are male and we don't do anything to network women. Oh, this was awesome. <laughs> this was really special. Um, it really was special for me. I had no idea that we would gather this many women today at all, you know, and just to meet some of the, the pioneers 
you know, out here today has just been really exciting. It's fabulous. There's women in every kind of aviation you can mention. They each go to the particular school that is necessary for them to accomplish what they want to accomplish. And then they go on their way, and that's why they're here. Keep flying. Follow your heart and enjoy those clouds each and every day. Actor John Travolta is also an ATP-rated pilot. He was at AirVenture to introduce one of his movies at Camp Scholler's Fly-In Theater and also made himself available to answer a few questions. When I was a child, everyone was interested in aerospace and aviation, and the jet age was emerging, and it was a very big deal. Today, it's more difficult to get young people interested in the field. So therefore, people like myself and Harrison Ford and others uh, that are more kind of visible in, in the general public are trying to get uh, young people involved in aviation as the Young Eagles program uh, uh, with how that exists today. So maybe they say, oh, if John Travolta or Harrison Ford is interested in this, maybe it's something for me. And uh, that's really the bigger purpose is, is, is to get uh, the young people interested in aviation again. I was self-motivated to, to be inspired by aviation, but uh, I think that others can motivate others. I quit three times when I started flying because two of my instructors were too rough on me and hard on me. Well, they weren't inspiring me, but I still loved it. And I tried one last time, and this one guy from, from United Airlines, a fur-loaded pilot, he, when I quit the third time, he cried. And I said, wow, he must care. I don't want to make him cry. I, I'm going to go solo. So the next day I soloed for his benefit. And of course, ultimately, it was for my benefit. Who knows where the inspiration will come from? For me, it was a furloughed United Airlines pilot, wasn't threatened by a 15 year old kid. You know, uh, it could be a book. You know, I, I read all sorts of aviation books growing up. It could be um, a particular airplane, it could be a particular trip, uh, it, it could be a, a person, it could be aerobatics, it could be military, it could be aerospace. I mean, honestly, uh, how we go about it is so varied and. and, and um, uh, and subjective, really. We'll be back in a moment to wrap up Aero TV's daily update from AirVenture. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own, and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Join us again tomorrow for Aero TV's overview of the week at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.